Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Many of you, um, after watching my last video, have asked about the antenna I was using. It's an ultra short uh, HF multiband antenna. It doesn't need any guys and really useful for throwing up in a compromised situation, which for me, I wanted to use it on a really small rocky summit. Um, but it, it would actually be ideal for using on holiday, um, on a hotel balcony, a veranda, or somewhere that you just want to throw up a wire and um, explore the bands, explore the HF bands. Uh, the main criteria for me, and uh, you might remember I asked for some advice in a, in a previous video a few months back, was I wanted something that would fit onto this uh, carbon six pole. So it had to be less than six meters long, ideally, you know, sort of five and a half meters. And many of you gave me good suggestions, but a lot of them were just a little bit too long for this pole. So what I decided to do in the end was an adapt um, an idea I'd seen uh, friend Gavin, GM0GAV use on um, some uh, rocky summits in Sky. So I settled on a 5.5 metre vertical radiator, so which is 18 feet, and a 4.25 metre uh, or 14 feet for uh, for two radials. Now, this is a, a random wire antenna and it, it's quite difficult to get a random wire antenna to work at this length. Random wires aren't random. Um, you'll have seen, and yes, yeah, another video that I did, that there is a set list of lengths you can use for a random wire. And these are designed that they give a relatively low impedance at the feed point, so your tuner has a chance of matching or getting a match, so you can use the antenna on that band. They're not necessarily the most efficient antennas, but they are versatile and flexible if you're using them with a tuner. So I'd be using this with a KX2 in the tuner. So my main mission was could I make this antenna work on 40 meters through to 10 meters using the tuner? Uh, the advice I got was I would not be able to get this to work on 40, but um, as you'll see, um, I found a way around it. So the bill of materials, dead simple. There's not much in this. And honestly, you could knock it together in about 20 minutes. So first of all, we have some Sota Beams lightweight wire, which I normally have a reel of um, in the house. Um, a cheap antenna winder. I know everybody 3D prints these these days, but this is the smallest one I could find. Um, a couple of banana plugs, which are um, just the sort of standard gold plated ones with, um, with screws on them. Again, you could use anything for this, but to attach it to the top of the pole, this is a Sota Beams um, little uh, antenna mount. It's got two different sized holes on it. The, the bigger um, hole actually fits over the fiberglass masts such as the um, spider beams type. Um, the smaller hole fits perfectly over my carbon six so I just um, thread the antenna through the larger hole. In my case you can make one of these from bits of old chopping board but I, I had some in stock. Uh, yeah I'm sure everyone's got a few of these lying around. Uh, BNC uh, to banana plug connectors. Um, you need a little bit of heat shrink, which um, I've got reels of this stuff, but um, my wife picked these up and um, I think it was um, one of the uh, discount supermarkets, pre-cut lengths, all different sizes, so really handy for this kind of thing. And um, you know, that's about it really. You have to um, be able to solder, but we're only soldering um, the ends of two wires with this one. Um, I use this with a choke. So I pre-made this choke ages ago um, with uh, two BNCs and that's a, uh, uh, a ferrite core just with um, I think it's probably a dozen turns um, around it but you know that's just the most simple simple choke to wind and um, why would I use a choke well it's not a balanced antenna this and even with QRP there's going to be some RF heading back towards your radio and um, that blocks it from the uh, outer shield of the coax so on to the antenna then so how did I make the actual uh, radiating wire well the first end of it's dead simple. It's a wire connected into a, a banana plug. This is your 18 feet or 5.5 meters of wire. What I tend to do is just um, solder the end up to make a solid connection. Um, a couple of bits of shrink wrap on it to give it a bit of strength because by soldering you're introducing a sort of fragile um, weak point and then it's uh, simply screwed down into the, uh, into the banana plug and that's it. The other end of this um, wire, I just simply looped through the um, uh, the Sota Beams little antenna mount thing and um, you can see here it's just looped through, that's a lark's foot. 
Um, and I haven't even got to the stage of finishing the, this off yet because I thought I'd better <laughs> test it before, you know, in case I needed to adjust it. So that's simply secured with tape. So what I will do is um, I'll cut that back now that I'm happy with it and put a bit of heat shrink on there as well. And that is, um, that's your radiating wire sorted. Onto the counterpoise then. Uh, this is just about as straightforward as the, as the radiator. This time I've used a black banana plug and it's got two wires coming out fr from it. Um, there's a thicker bit of um, heat shrink there where the two wires are connected together and soldered together before being screwed into uh, uh, the banana plug. And I've got two thinner bits of heat shrink coming out either side. Now what I actually did when the heat shrink was warm, um, I formed this um, sort of T-shape so when it's set, the wires are naturally um, leading away from one another now, so it works quite well. So one wire gets thrown that way, one wire gets thrown in the other direction. You can have these um, counterpoise wires or radials on the ground, um, or really you could have them just dropping away from you, um, as I did on the uh, first test of this. At the other end of the counterpoise wires, um, I've attached two short pieces of uh, Soty Beam's guy rope, and again, I've um, used heat shrink just to secure those. And that's just in case I ever want to peg the ends of this out. And that is it. It literally took me 20 minutes to make this using an 18 foot length of wire and two 14 foot lengths of wire. Absolutely simple. So I did some basic measurements um, on the ground out in the garden before I took this thing up a hill just to make sure that my uh, KX2 would handle it. And you know, it's a reasonably efficient antenna on um, on 20, 17 and 15 metres, but possibly was going to present a problem tuning on um, on 10 and 12 and was definitely going to present a problem tuning on 40. I was told it wouldn't work on 40. So I managed to get it to tune on um, every band from, from 10 um, right down to 20 metres. Um, and then when it came to 40, yeah, the tuner was um, hunting about, got a match, 1.9 to 1, sometimes over to, you know, I wasn't too happy with it. So what I did was I threw my 49 to 1 in, which I already have, and, I, you know, lots of people will own a 49 to 1 if they use an N-fed half wave, and boom, uh, perfect match. So in order to illustrate that, I'm going to show you some of the SWR measurements that I took from the antenna, um, using my uh, MFJ analyzer, I could have used a um, you know a, a, a nano VNA and had SWR graphs, but you know for a random wire antenna, I wasn't really interested in an SWR curve. I was just interested in was the SWR going to be low enough that my little um, KX2 would be able to handle it and tune it. So let's have a look at some of the data. Right then, let's take a quick look at. Um, how the SWR behaved across all the bands with this antenna. Now, just a bit of context with these photographs. If you see my 49 to 1 sitting next to the antenna analyzer, as you do in this picture here, that means that um, it wasn't in circuit. So it's just the bare wires going into that banana plug connector and into the uh, antenna analyzer. So starting off on the 10 meter band, we have an SWR of 10, which is not a problem for the, for the tuner to match. Uh, coming down to 12 meters, um, SWR of 12. Then we go down to uh, 15 meters, and SWR is 14. Again, still able to match that. Now we go down to the um, 17 meter band. SWR is you know quite high there at 14. Um, I've also included a, a photograph here of the SWR with the 49 to 1 in place. On, on the 17 meter band. And the reason for that is when I used the antenna for the first time, I forgot to remove the 49 to one. And uh, the antenna worked brilliantly well. Um, you'll see if you watch that video, how uh, the contacts went on 17 meters that day. And um, you can see by the uh, antenna analyzer there, the SWR is only 3.5 to one with the uh, 49 to one in place. Okay, then we go down to 14 me uh, megahertz or a 20 meter band. And uh, the SWR is 5.5, that's with no, um, no transformer 49 to 1 in place. And finally down to the 40 meter band. So without the transformer in place, you can see that the SWR is pretty high at 23.2. Now, when I was testing this on the grass outside, I did actually manage to get a match um, using the, the, the KX2's internal tuner. 
I have to say so the ground conditions out there, damp grass and soil um, is entirely different to what I would be experiencing on a mountain top. And there's the um, 7 megahertz band with the 49 to 1 in place and the SWR is 12 which means I can get a 1 to 1 match using the tuner inside the radio and I did make contacts and I was getting 5 and 9 signal reports. We're talking about inter G here. Um, there was um, a theory that because it was a vertical I would lose the uh, NVIS aspect of it so I, my, my signal wouldn't be <laughs> heading up and down but I did make the same contacts I would normally make um, across the UK using this antenna. I did also try this on 60 metres and 80 metres without the 49 to 1 and I couldn't get it to tune at all. I suppose it would tune using the 49 to 1 but generally if I was going to use those bands I would take a specific antenna for that. Remember this is designed for using in a compromised situation such as a rocky mountain top or you know a hotel balcony or, or even next to your tent when you're camping. It's a really really great antenna where you can just stick it in the ground. Now if you look at how I set it up in the garden, what I did was um, I drove a fiberglass stake into the ground, it's probably about a foot into the ground, and I just sleeved my uh, carbon mast over the top of it and that was my antenna up. It was so simple, you can imagine how good that would be to use on a campsite, very discreet and you're not going to upset your neighbours. So there you go. Simple, simple antenna to make. It'll get you on the air, it'll get you some contacts, parts on the air, WWFF, whatever. Once you put the spot away, people are looking for you anyway. They've got the big aerials and the big power. You've just got to get your signal out somehow, and this antenna will do it for you. Okay, so let me know if you build one and let me know how you get on. I plan on using it over the summer lots, so uh, I'll probably feed back in a future video. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Seven three.